could be healed. Amen. So our theme scripture, of course, is uh, Christ, Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ hath redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse, right? Being made a curse. You guys need to turn to that for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangeth on a tree, right? Okay. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, right, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise, right, the promise of the Spirit through faith. Um, the New Tr Living Translation says, but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, curse is everyone who, hung, who is hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised to Abraham so that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. So we have been talking about the fact that we are redeemed, not just redeemed, but we are redeemed from the curse of the law, right? We are, and so we know that the curse meant spiritual death, correct? It meant poverty, and it also meant sickness and disease. So we are redeemed from all of that. And we've spent a little bit of time um, talking about that. Um, this Tonight, though, I want to talk to you a little bit about... Um, that now we're redeemed, now that we've been rescued, now we know the price has been paid for our healing. What are we to do? Okay, we know what Jesus did. We know he took stripes on his back, right? We know that. We know he's redeemed us. We know he was crucified. We know that he died. We know that he was buried. He went to hell and, and, uh, and as our substitute. We know that he was raised to life, right? We know that he's seated at the Father's right hand, correct? So we know all of that. So Jesus has done everything that he's going to do. He sat down. He says, okay, I've done my part. I've redeemed you. I've rescued you. I've ransomed you. Now, what are we to do? What should we do? And so... Um, first of all, I'm probably going to, it's going to be a little interesting way I'm going to do this, but I want you to turn to Matthew chapter four, verse 23 through 25. And I'm going to read this in the King James, um, version, because I want to look at the kind of the general healing ministry of Jesus. When I say general, this, um, this passage kind of encompasses it. When Matthew wrote this, he was talking about all that Jesus did in, in, his, in his healing um, ministry. It was kind of a synopsis or a summary of it, okay? So in Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 25, it says this, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those who were possessed with devils, those which were lunatic, those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Delapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. So we see here that Jesus went about all Galilee, and he was teaching, right? He was preaching, but he was also healing. So he would teach, he would preach, and he would heal. He would teach, he would preach, and he would heal, all right? But when you're looking at these scriptures, for instance, in um, verse 23, uh, it says that Jesus was healing. This word, this word for healing actually is the word therapeo, which is a Greek word. And it was, um, it means that he basically, he took time to lay hands on them. 
He took time to instruct them, but he also required them to do something physically, okay? So he was um, wanting to aid them in how to receive this healing. So he, it, it was more than just, you know, Jesus just, you know, just healing. He took time. You know, if you have ever been here when Pastor David or Pastor Andy or whomever is ministering, but ministering uh, healing to the sick, um, you'll see sometimes Pastor David will take more time. He'll, he'll stop and talk to them and he'll instruct them. Sometimes he'll have somebody else come and, and pray with them because he wants them to, their hearts and their minds to get settled so that they can receive what God has. Many times he'll say uh, things like, um, now when I lay my hands on you, receive the healing power. When I lay, he doesn't necessarily that way, but that's basically what he's saying. When I lay my hands on you, my hands are a point of contact for the healing power of God to flow into your body. Receive it. You have to receive it. If you don't receive it, you don't get healed. The power is there. But it takes us cooperating with that power to receive what's there, to receive what actually belongs to us. So Jesus took time to work with the people. Now, we're talking about people who were not born again. We're talking about the fact Jesus hadn't even died on the cross yet. He hadn't been, you know, beaten yet. He hadn't received any stripes yet. But he took time to instruct them. All right? So, and then um, also in this passage, it, it talks about all types of sicknesses and diseases that that Jesus healed. I mean, it was all kinds, anything you could think of, all kinds of diseases, all kinds of sickness. Jesus took time to heal. And so it talks about um, that he um, healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, you know, um, because, you know, I'm curious a lot of times when I start reading stuff. So I said, okay, so what's the difference between all manner of sickness and all manner of of disease. So this is what I found out. Okay. So sickness in verse 23, um, it means a terminal condition for which there's no natural cure for a sickness that was a result of evil spirits, a condition for which there was no known, no known cure. So when it's talking about sickness, that's the kind of sickness it's talking about. They don't have any other hope. If Jesus, if they don't get healed, with Jesus there, they're going to die, okay? So terminal conditions, no natural cure. But then the other one, the diseases, this means a crippling or, de- or de- debilitating disease. Yes, that word. <laughs> so you can live with it, but you can't function. So these are kinds of things that Jesus was dealing with. Then in verse 24, when it uses the word sick, it's talking about it's, it's an all-encompassing term for all types of diseases and all types of sicknesses, every and any kind of sickness and disease. And then um, when it talks about torment, it means one that is tormented or afflicted. You know, this is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to torment us. He wants to torment us with physical sickness. Because what happens when you're tormented? You you don't rest. You don't have any peace. You you don't have any joy. You don't have any strength. None of that. You're you're looking at the, um, your relationships are affected. You can't go to work, affects your finances. It affects your whole, whole life. So these are the kinds of things that Jesus was working on. And then, so, um, then the word lunatic, this was interesting to me. It means moonstruck. 
an event that happened during the full moon, a sickness resulting from dabbling in the occult. It's like, oh, okay. But Jesus healed him. You know, I used to laugh when people say, you know, it's a full moon. <laughs> people act different when it's a full moon. Well, if you've been dabbling in the occult, you probably will act differently. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay? And then, um, so we got lunatic, and then, of course, uh, palsy is, is basically when somebody is paralyzed. So he dealt with uh, people that were tormented. They could have been tormented in their mind, tormented in their body. He dealt with people that, you know, every kind of disease that you could ever imagine. And, you know, you can go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61, where it talks about not just whether it's written here or not. Every disease was in the curse, and all that we've been redeemed from. So um, then there were, um, there's actually two Greek words used for the word healing. Um, one of them means to, to be cured, to be doctored. It's a healing power that progressively reverses the condition, a progressive or restoring uh, healing power. So you could think of like an example in the Bible would be of the 10 lepers. You remember Jesus says, it says as they went, they were healed. So it wasn't immediately when Jesus um, spoke to them and spoke healing to them and over them, but as they went, they were healed. So it was progressive. It was a cure. You know, it's kind of like when we go to the doctor, we get medicine. It's not instantaneous, Right. But if you follow the doctor's orders, you begin to feel better. Sometimes they'll tell you this is going to take two or three days before this begins to work, before you see a difference. Well, so that was one kind of healing. But then there was the other one where Jesus wanted us to, um, to cooperate with him. I guess you could put it that way. Um, in other words, he would, the power, he would display the power, or he would provide the power, but then he needed you to cooperate, or needed the people to cooperate with that power. The people needed to do something. They had to do something, like, for instance, the man with the withered hand. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. Okay, so he had to do something. The power to heal was there. Jesus made it available, but it was up to him to stretch forth his hand. He had a free will. He didn't have to do that. Okay? So we see that there could be the, um, and there are Greek words for these two types of healing. Um, do you want me to spell them for you? <laughs> are you taking notes? Okay. All right. So the one that is to be cured is spelled L-O-A-M-A-I. Okay? The other one is actually Therapuo. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's spelled T-H-E-R-A-P-E-U-O. And actually, it's where we get our word therapy from. So a good way to remember that, have you ever been to therapy? Okay, what do they do? They instruct you. They tell you what to do, but do they do it for you? No. Do you feel better if you don't do what they tell you? No. Do you feel better if they do what they tell you? Yes. Right? So it's, 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 that's where we get our word therapy from. Okay, so... Um, Let's look at a couple of examples. Well, let me just say this first. Another example of, you know, um, being cured would be Naaman, you know, in the, in the Old Testament. Remember his story? Naaman was this, you know, he was this military person. You know, he had um, rank. He had clout. He was, you know, he was all that. But he had leprosy. And he had a little Jewish girl in his home, servant girl, and she told his wife 
you know, um, he can get healed. There's a prophet in, in, in uh, wherever he was, there's a prophet <laughs> who can heal him. And um, so Naaman goes to the king, and the king is like, what, why are you coming to me? I can't heal you. I'm paraphrasing this. But um, so, um, so he rent his clothes. He tore his clothes because he's like, you know, I'm not God. I, I can't heal you. So the prophet heard about it. Elijah heard about it, and he said, send him to me. So he goes to um, see Elijah, and Elijah says, go down to the Jordan River and dip seven times. He's like, do you know who I am? You telling me to do what? You want me, you want me to go down to that dirty Jordan River and dip seven times? I thought you would come and wave your hand over me or speak something over me. You didn't even come to the door. So he got mad. He got upset. He was mad. Prideful. About to miss his healing. But his men, praise God for having people around you that will encourage you to do what's right. His men encouraged him. You know, if it was some great feat, wouldn't you have done it? And he said, you know, obviously he would have. So he finally did dip in the river, and his skin became just like baby skin, new skin. But he had to do something. He had to do something. It wouldn't have happened if he didn't do it. If he didn't take, do what he was instructed to do, it wouldn't happen. And I think about us as people, and I'm, I say us because I'm including myself in this. How many of us have heard the Spirit of God say, and you don't have to raise your hand, okay? You just look like. She's not, you know, I'm just listening. Um, but the Spirit of God has said, you should change your diet. And if you'll change, just make this adjustment in your diet. It'll make a difference in your, your physical body. Or how many have heard the Spirit of God say, uh, you need to exercise? And uh, you don't do that. Or maybe you do. But sometimes when God gives us instructions to do things, it's not always like what Naaman was thinking. It was going to be some grandiose, you know, grand thing, you know, that God was going to do. Sometimes it's just the Holy Spirit instructing us on how to live life. Do you know he knows our body? Do you know he knows our mind? He knows our soul. He knows our, God knows our thoughts. God knows what we deal with. You know, I think about when my, when I, when I consider the things that I listen to or the things that I watch. And if I get a tweak not to do that, I may not understand it. I mean, I'll give you a for instance. I'll, I'll give you for instance. I, um, one of my chill out things is to, to um, sometimes watch the Hallmark Channel. So I used to be able to just kind of sit and vegetate and watch Hallmark movies. But now, and don't nobody get mad, don't write me no nasty letters or nothing <laughs> like that. But now they are showing people of same sex, kissing, and I was just like, and getting married and all these things, and I was like, can't watch that no more. Why? Because in my heart, I don't want to, I don't want my mind to be messed up. I don't want my thinking skewed, and you know, if you immerse yourself in stuff, you become and you think 
what you have immersed yourself in. Now, it might seem like a small thing. Somebody else might say, well, Minister Linda, you know, that happens all, you know, that's part of our world. And it is. But not mine. Not my world. That's not my conviction. So that means I have to not do that. But what if I continue to do that? So now I do puzzles or, you know, I like to watch um, some of the home shows, uh, you know, the HD TV. I like to watch some of that. But I'm just saying I have to be mindful and I have to listen. My point is we have to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And it's not always major things. Now, I, I'm kind of getting away from healing, but all of this really works together, okay? Because your mind is important. What you put in there is important, okay? What you think is important, all right? Um, when you think about your relationships with your, your spouse, Holy Spirit gives you Instruction, don't do that. Or do this. And if you do it, it brings healing and, and wholeness to that relationship. Or if you don't do it, it could bring healing and wholeness to that relationship. Like, don't overspend. Or um, don't take time, you know, um, clean up after yourself. You know, whatever it may be, the Spirit of God is here to help us, okay? So let me, um, let's look at another, let's look at um, John chapter 5. This is when Jesus heals the lame man. And I'm going to read these next few out of the uh, New Living Translation. So J John chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. It says, Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed laid on the porches, one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him, he knew he had been ill for a long time. He asked him, would you like to get well? And this is what he replied. I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. So in this case, here's this, this man. He's been sick for 38 years. Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? Does he, that's a direct question. But he didn't give Jesus a direct answer. He started making excuses. I don't have nobody to help me. Jesus didn't ask him, do you have anybody help you? He said, do you want to be healed? And thank God, he obviously saw where this man was, what he needed, and he saw beyond what he was saying. But he instructed him. He said, get up, stand up, take up your bed, and walk. He was instructed to do something. The healing power of God was there, was present. But if he didn't stand up, if he didn't take up his bed and walk, would he have been healed? No, he wouldn't have been healed. Our part, we have a part to play. We have something to do. We have to do whatever the Holy Spirit tells us to do. Amen? Amen. So um, 
I think about this um, particular passage, I was thinking to myself, I said, you know, when he, now you think about this, 38 years this man had been this way. So really what Jesus was saying to him, are you ready to get your life back? But getting his life back meant that he would have to get a job. Because, you know, he'd been laying at that pool for 38 years. He might have had to, you know, get some education or do something, get his skills up to date. Um, he may have had to, well, he definitely would have had to change his friends because he needed to leave that place, right? Had to go find some other friends. So his whole life was about to change with just what Jesus asked him. And, I, you know, I get so, no, I won't say I get tickled, but I, I listen to people, so I'm going to shake my head. That's probably better. I, have you ever heard somebody, they have, Christians I'm talking about, they've been in an accident, and there's a healing line, and even some have been called up, not here, been called up for, I mean, been called out for healing, and they're like, well, no, don't pray for me yet because I need to get my money first. <laughs> it happens. It happens. So you'd rather get money instead of being healed. Because God may not decide. I shouldn't say that. God wants everybody to be healed. But what I'm saying is that you've missed your opportunity. Now, God still is merciful, and he can still heal you. But your motive, your thinking was wrong. It was off. I remember Brother Hagen telling a story about a woman. He, he and some other ladies and his wife, and they went to... See this lady, I believe I have this story right because it just came to him, but went to see this lady, and she was in a wheelchair and been in a wheelchair, and they were, they prayed for her, and God literally lifted her up out of the wheelchair, and she was, I mean, out of the wheelchair, and all she had to do was just stretch out her legs, and she would be able to walk, but you know what she did? She reached back. And she got her wheelchair, and she sat back down in it, and she said, I'm going to be here until I die. And that's what happened. She made a decision. She wasn't willing to do what the Spirit of God was saying for her to do, get up and walk. But the power was there. The healing power was there. Praise God. Praise the Lord. There's a lot that could be said about this particular um, passage, but let's look at the, um, the paralyzed man. Let's look at Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And you all are very familiar with this, but let me... Um, Let's read this. In the New Living Translation, again, I'm reading. It says, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. You know, Jesus was the talk of the town. I mean, everybody was talking about what he was doing and the wonderful miracles and the healings and the things that he did and, and the words that he spoke, how he spoke with authority and stuff. So it says, soon... The house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, there it is again, he was preaching the word of God to them. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat, on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there 
thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. The man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. So that man listened to Jesus. He jumped up. He picked up that mat. He said, oh, yeah, I'm strutting now. I'm going home. But this was a paralyzed man. He couldn't walk. But at what Jesus said, he followed his instructions. He did what he told him to do, and he received his healing. But you have to remember, in every situation, we have a free will. God can tell us, but if we don't do it, it's not on God. It's on us. It's not on God. It's on us. Praise God. Well, you know what, guys? Um, I had some other examples, but let me just share this with you. Just remember this. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. He is the same. If he healed yesterday, he heals today, and he'll heal forever. And um, so you can see that healing is God's will. I mean, we didn't specifically say that or, or, or really hone in on that necessarily. But everything that we've, we've been reading, we know that we're redeemed from the curse of the law. We know we're redeemed from sickness and disease. We know that. Why would God do that? Why would Jesus allow himself to be beaten if it wasn't the Father's will to be healed? Healing belongs to us. It's ours. Now, I'll say this again. I said it earlier um, in some of the other lessons that we live in this world, okay? We, we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where there is sickness and disease. So if you, are, if you have to deal with something in your body, it doesn't mean that you don't have faith. It doesn't mean that you're less than. It doesn't mean that, you know, the word isn't working for you or even maybe necessarily even that you did anything wrong. But what it does mean is that you have the authority over it. What it does mean is you can speak the word. What it does mean is you can believe God. What it does mean you can stand on the word and you can get your healing. Amen. And, you know, sometimes we have to, you know, people get operations. Sometimes people, you know, have had cancer and they've had to do chemotherapy. God is still in it. Anything that you do, you do it by faith. Amen. Anything you have to do, you do it by faith. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. And, you know, some people, especially, okay, let me finish that. Some people will say, oh, well, you know, deny what they have. That's foolishness. Because then you don't attack it. You don't take authority over it. You're, you're, whether you know it or not, you're just receiving it. You're just letting it run rapid, or just, just wrap it. Just run, just do whatever it wants to do in your body. Because you're, you're denying that you even have it. But that's not the will of God either. Acknowledge it and get to it. Use the word. Speak the word. Do it in faith. Do it by faith, okay? You know, sometimes I know that um, people say, well, things run in my family. And I've said before, we're in a new family, right? 
And then some people have had, you know, they've, they've dealt with things before they got saved. They didn't take care of their bodies before they got saved. But now you are saved. Now you have Jesus in your heart. Now you're receiving revelation about what God has done for you. Well, that's your past. And you just ex- ask God to just help you to do whatever it is you need to do to, to get over whatever it is. Jesus is the healer. And the thing is, you know what? He didn't say it had to be a certain way. You know, there was some, he, like one guy, he spit, put clay on his eyes. <laughs> guy saw trees, you know, looked like trees, and Jesus prayed for him again. There was one, what did he do with the guy with the ear? Um, Oh, when, G- when Peter cut off the man's ear, Jesus picked the ear up and put it back on him. I mean, God's not limited. What, he, what, what limits him is us. But he's not limited. He's creative. He is the creator. He created our bodies. He knows how our bodies function. He knows our blood system. He knows everything about us. Praise God. And he says, I want you healed. So don't wait until you're in a crisis, though, to take hold of your healing. Meditate on healing scriptures. Feed on scriptures about healing. So that if or when something comes, you already have your arsenal. You're already ready to fight that battle. You already know what you got to do. You're already standing in faith. You already say, oh. I know what to do with that. And then some, a wise man said to me one time, he says, you know, begin to believe God for the little things for healing. So if something big comes, you already know what to do. You've already practiced. So like headaches or, you know, I jam my toe or whatever little thing it might be, something that's not some major thing. Praise God. Come to healing um, night when we have third Sunday of the month. Generally, we preach or teach on healing. Why? You're building yourself up in this area. You're building your faith. You're, you, it's not that you're preparing for anything to go wrong, but you're building up. Actually, you know, um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but also the word is, is, is health. It's medicine to our flesh. So it brings health and healing to our flesh. So you sit and you listen, and you're getting health. It's like taking gospel pills. Amen? (laughs) Praise God. All right, it's time for me to stop. But I want to read something real quick to you, and then I'm definitely going to stop. Um, This is um, a spiritual psalm by Dr. Lillian B. Yeoman. And this is what she said. She says, Christ redeemed me from the curse of the law as he hung on that shameful tree. And all that is worse is contained in the curse. Jesus has set me free. I am not under the curse, not under the curse, for Jesus has set me free. For, for sickness, I have health. For poverty, I have wealth, since Jesus has ransomed me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord.